Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a pretty awesome little emulation setup for under $100. All of the stuff I'm going to be using in this video was bought from eBay, but you can always check your local marketplaces like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, OfferUp. There's a bunch of different third-party sites out there, and people are listing this stuff up. Now, this whole setup is actually going to come in around the price of a Raspberry Pi 8GB model, and I have nothing against the Raspberry Pi. I personally really love it. I use it every single day. I've made a ton of videos on it. But when it comes to emulation, we are kind of stuck there, even with the Raspberry Pi 4 right now. Before we get started, I do want to mention that this setup will burn a lot more power than the Raspberry Pi will. It's going to take up more space, it's going to make more noise, so if you just want to keep it simple, go with the Raspberry Pi 4. It's a great little board, and there are thousands and thousands of retro games that you can play on this thing, but when it comes to the higher end stuff like GameCube and Wii, it's not going to do it. The Raspberry Pi 4 isn't going to run GameCube at full speed, there might be a couple games that get real close. But if you don't mind the extra size and the extra power consumption, then I would definitely recommend building something like we're going to do in this video. So for the base, I'm going to be using an Optiplex 3010. I picked this up on eBay with no hard drive for $68 shipped to the door. It has a third gen i5. You can also pick up the i3s or you can go with a fourth gen for a little bit more. Unfortunately, I didn't realize that this didn't come with a disk drive, so there is going to be a gap in the front, but I can overlook that. I wouldn't have used it anyway, and I can fill this gap in with something down the road. This one came pre-installed with four gigabytes of RAM. I mean, you can get these up to 16. Most of the time you're going to see them with eight and a 500 gigabyte hard drive for a little bit more, but you got that extra to go with it. These third gen Intel CPUs do come with built in graphics, but I actually opted to pick up an OEM GT730. This is a 2 GB model with GDDR5, and I would highly recommend going with the GDDR5 version. And keep in mind, most of these only have DisplayPort and DVI out, so if you don't have a monitor that supports a DisplayPort, you will have to pick up an HDMI adapter, but they're pretty cheap. There's a ton of these available on eBay. I just offered somebody $29 and got it shipped to me. Usually, when you buy one of these Optiplexes from eBay, it's going to have a hard drive installed, and I would recommend using that. But if you end up getting one like I did with no hard drive at all, you can use a USB drive or an external hard drive to run the operating system we're going to be using in this video, which, by the way, is Bato Serum. It's a really nice Linux-based emulation operating system, and if you need help getting that set up, I have a full tutorial video. I'll leave a link for that in the description. Final thing you're going to need is a controller. If you already have a PS4 controller or an Xbox controller, you can plug it directly into USB. USB, but I just picked up a cheap $12 controller from eBay. In this video, I'm not going to go over installing Botosair and getting it set up. Definitely check out my first tutorial video. This video is more about, is it worth doing something like this? Putting a PC together for under $100 to emulate what we want to emulate. And with the setup I have here, a third gen i5-3450 with that GT730, I think we can do up to Wii with this, and maybe some PS2. We will take a look at that by the end of this video, but I do think that PS2 will be a little too much for this GT730. Either way you look at it, we're still going to be able to do a lot more on this system than we could with a Raspberry Pi or similar other single board computers. But by the end of this video, you'll have a good idea of how this system's going to perform, and if it would be worth putting something like this together for yourself. And really, the only thing I need to do to put this together is install the GPU, because I'm going to be using an external 2TB hard drive to uh, store all of my games and the operating system. But like I mentioned, you can always use a USB drive, and you probably already have one laying around. You could test this out, and then later on down the road, you could upgrade that storage. So I'm booting in the Botosera right now. I'm using that wired controller. This is just a cheaper wired controller. And you can also pick up cheaper wireless controllers. You can actually get a set for around $18 on eBay that comes with two controllers and two 2.4 gigahertz dongles. So you just plug those directly into the USB port and you can go ahead and set those controllers up wirelessly with Botosera. Now, if you're not familiar with Botosera, basically what we have here is emulation station as our front end. It's gonna use RetroArch and some standalone emulators in the background. It's basically the same thing we'd run on our Raspberry Pi using RetroPie, Botocera, EMU Elect. There's a ton of them out there right now. This is fully customizable. I've got a custom theme installed, and you can use the built-in downloader to get all that set up. We'll just go back to the carbon theme. This is how it's going to look directly out of the box before you get another theme installed, and it still looks pretty decent. And something like this would work inside of an arcade cabinet. You can plug in your USB encoder and use your arcade stick with this PC. You can set it up in the controller menu from Botocera, or you can use a whole nother operating system. I mean, it's really up to you. So real quick, we'll go to information here, just so you can see what we're working with. 
And this is actually a little odd. It's saying that I have six gigs of RAM, but there's only four in this PC. I'm wondering if it's taken into account the GPU RAM because that is a two gig card. But as you can see, we have that Intel i5 3450. We have a base clock of 3.1 gigahertz and a boost up to 3.5. So yeah, I think that this CPU and GPU combination can do up to Wii. Uh, there will be some Wii games that might struggle a bit, but I think we'll be able to cover most of GameCube, uh, Sega Saturn, PSP. Really, for this video, I just wanted to test the higher-end stuff, because when it comes to the low-end stuff like PC Engine, Neo Geo, FBA, NES, Super Nintendo, I'm 100% positive that this setup will handle it. So first things first, Dreamcast, looking great here. It's using the Flycast core inside of RetroArch. I didn't even have to switch over to ReDream or anything like that. We're getting great performance, and going into this, I thought we'd have great performance with this. And since this is using the Flycast core inside of RetroArch, I think we'll also be able to do a Thomas Wave and Naomi with no issue. And just as I thought, Naomi is also performing really well. This is bordered down. And by the way, the FPS is going to be listed in the top right hand corner of the monitor screen for each one of these games I'm going to be testing. Next on the list, we have some N64 with GoldenEye 007, and for this core here, I'm using the, the Mupin 64 Plus Next core inside of RetroArch, but you can use the standalone version of Mupin if you want to. Moving over to Sega Saturn, this is also looking really good here. I'm using RetroArch with the Yoba Sanchiro core. I'm not upscaled or anything like that. This is the native res, but we're running at full speed. Taking it up a notch to PSP using PPSSPP. This is the standalone version, non retro arch version. We're at 2x here with Tekken 6, and I do want to see if we can go up to 3x. I got a feeling we can with this GT730. So we'll just take this up one more. And yeah, I mean, we're still getting full speed with it 60 FPS. I know it's a bit hard to see, but it is up in the top right hand corner. And with the harder to emulate games like Chains of Olympus, you might have to go down to 1x, but it'll still do it. I mean, we have plenty of CPU power here for PSP games. Okay, so far, everything's looking pretty good. Dreamcast, Naomi, Sega Saturn, N64, and PSP. And going into this, I had a good feeling it was going to handle all of that. Now it's time to take it up just a bit more to GameCube. We're going to be using the Dolphin emulator. And uh, we'll go with something a little harder to run. We'll just go ahead and get it out of the way. Automotalista. So through the menus, it's been looking pretty good, and uh, as you can see here, it is handling GameCube really well. This is one of my go-to tests. This is a harder game to run. You might run into issues with something like F-Zero, but I gotta say I'm really pleased by the performance here. We are at 60 FPS with this game here, and uh, around this corner is usually where it starts to dip down on lower end machines, and it's sticking at 60. So yeah, the setup like this can also handle GameCube, but uh, there's really one more that we need to test, which is kind of taxing on the GPU and CPU side of things, and that's PS2. PCSX2 is included with Botocera, it's a standalone PS2 emulator, and we can only access OpenGL on Linux, and I got a feeling that the GT730 will struggle. So let's head over there right now. And we'll go with uh, something that's not too hard to run, but, uh, you know, it's not easy either. This is Bloody Roar 4. And just a heads up, with this emulator, the FPS is actually listed in the lower right-hand corner. And even through the menus, I felt it struggling a bit. This is the European version of Bloody Roar 4, so it will only run at a maximum of 50 FPS. We're only at 30 here. 
Now, it could be the CPU, it could be the GPU, but I got a good feeling that it's on the GPU side of things making us run so slow. So I do have a little bit of a test that I want to run here. I'm going to close this game down. We're going to take that GT730 out of the system and I'm going to replace it with a GT1030. That's going to give me an idea if it's the CPU or the GPU. Now the 1030 is not a super powerful card. But in the past, I have tested PS2 emulation on the GT1030, and as long as the CPU is up to snuff, it does a pretty decent job. So really, what I'm trying to do here is just find out if it's the GPU or the CPU holding us back in this little build for PS2 emulation. So let me go ahead and get this in. We'll just reboot the system and see what happens. Alright, so here we are running with that GT1030, still using that 3rd gen i5 CPU and we're at 50 FPS. So it was the GPU that was holding us back with PS2 emulation in this thing, and uh, I had a feeling it would be. That OpenGL performance on the newer 1030 card is way better, and that's what we're using to emulate PS2 games. And you know, right off the bat, I would have suggested just use a GT1030 instead of that GT730, but you can't pick these up for a decent deal anymore, at least right now at the time of making this video. So every once in a while, I do notice a couple stutters here and there, but it's definitely performing a lot better than that 730. So overall, so overall, I do think we got some really great performance out of this little setup here. And by the way, this is the card we were using in the video. It's a 2 gigabyte GT730, but I also tested a 1 gigabyte MSI GT730, and we're getting the same performance. The MSI version should be clocked a little higher, but uh, when it comes down to it, they were performing exactly the same between that OEM variant and the MSI. And from what I've seen and what I paid, the OEM variant does come in a lot cheaper. But make sure you pick up the GDDR5 version. You will run across these with DDR3. Make sure it has GDDR5. Total cost on the PC with the GPU, 98 bucks. You probably already have a controller laying around and a USB drive that you can run everything from. So, I mean, you can get out making something like this for around 100 bucks. And it does perform much better than any other ARM single board computer in this price range. And when it comes to the Raspberry Pi, if you opted for the 8GB model, an SD card and everything, you can actually spend a little more than I did on this setup here. But in the end, I mean, it's really up to you. If you already have a PC running pretty well, you can always run Botocera from a USB drive or an external hard drive and just use what you have. But if you're looking to build a little system on the cheap, this is definitely the way to go. If you're interested in picking up something like this, I will leave a few links in the description. I'm also going to leave a link to my full tutorial on getting Botocera set up on an x86 PC like this. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.